Stop. I got the horse right here. The name is Paul Revere. Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Barn Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forrest. We're going to go through the Saturday, April 30th races at Hastings. Uh, we do have seven races yep. on tap. We have eight on the Sunday program on May the 1st. We've got 15 races for this weekend. Uh, a little tough time filling last week, but uh, we're catching up, and it's great to see a good card. Slowly, a couple uh, good cards. Good ro races. rolling into shape here. Yeah, there are some really good nice races. Allowance nice allowance races. races. Yeah. Uh, as Mike mentioned, seven on tap on Saturday. Let's get right into them. The first is a $4,000 climbing event. non of three lifetime, four fillies and mares. Field of five. I went to the three here, Ariki Princess. Uh, John Snow, both John yeah. Snow and his dad, Mel, have been off to a They're great start. kicking it. Yeah. They are on fire right now. Uh, as we mentioned, you know, they, they have a farm. So Get these ready. horses have a little bit extra training, and that has proven to be it's a huge. difference uh, early on uh, in this meet. Ariki Princess, anytime she was at the 4,000 level last year, was extremely competitive. Uh -huh. uh, two wins, two seconds. Starts out this year protected, but at the same 4,000 level, I got her on top of Moonride, another one that was always dangerous when she was in that $4,000 level. Uh, very good year last year, five of nine in the money. And about catching fire in the third spot, seems to be maybe the only speed in here. Uh, Hamill and McPherson are always dangerous, but I don't, I just like, I, I think a Ricky Princess can sit just off her and run her down, so I put her on top. I went three, four, five. Yeah, I got the same three horses. I just switched them around yeah. a little. I went to catch and fire on top. I think she's the best filly in the race, and uh, if she can, you know, produce one of her A races, she is the horse to beat. Uh, she has dwelt at the start in the past, but yeah. when she breaks well, she's got some tricks in her bag. But, I mean, and that's her trick is to break slowly, <laughs> and that's not a great trick to have. But, I mean, she's done it, and uh, when she breaks well and is on her game, she's, she's better than a $4,000 horse, yeah. and I'm hoping that kind of race surfaces uh, today with, uh, you know, b being freshened up. She should be a happy filly, uh, working well, great connections, Hamill yeah. and McFer I, I just went to catch and fire to defeat a Riki Princess. I, I, for the reasons you mentioned, uh, this horse ran some big races last year, and uh, uh, maybe catch and fire is a little bit better, but if catch and fire decides to not be at her best, a Riki Princess can, will beat her. So, yeah. I mean, those two are the top two. I put the four Moon Ride, who's eligible on any day to win, and uh, she's been working well, too, for last year's top trainer, Mike Anderson. I went 5-3-4 in the Saturday opener. On to race number two, 6250, uh, non-three a lifetime, uh, going six panels. I ended up on the four horse. Crackdown, pretty impressed with the way this one's been training yeah. for Patty Laney. Claim for four, gets to run protected in here. And uh, this is a better horse than a $4,000 horse. Needed the time off after that victory, but working well and uh, looks like the lone speed in here. I, yeah, I can't see anyone going. With no excuses. Very anyway. tough, this horse yeah. doesn't win. Uh, today, then, uh, you know, probably don't follow. If it runs second, don't follow it back because yeah. this is like the best scenario Pretty for much this horse. Ideally made Ideal. for him, yeah. I put the one horse strangely arousing in for second. Uh, another one that was running his better company last year did tip down to the $4,000 level last fall, but uh, had some excuses coming from off the pace. But once again, she's an off, or he's an off the pace horse and uh, might fall victim to a no, a non-contested pace. So it looks yeah. like it's going to be a loose leader in here in Crackdown. So maybe the one might be relegated to second, but he could win it if things fall apart. And I put the two horse four she's devil in for third. Four, one, two. I don't know much to add. Crackdown looks like a, a best bet of the day kind of horse in yeah. here for me. If it can run, if it can get back to that form, then that horse has got to win. Yeah, anything close to, to, to those two wins he had last year will dust this field. Mm -hmm. I put Stranger Rouse in the second spot. Uh, as you mentioned, probably the second best horse in here. Uh, I like the fact that he started out the meet last year with a win so and, and spuds off to a good year too. Just one start and one win. And I put Wiley's Command in third spot. Uh, wow. Harold Soros. Harold's off to a good start too. He's got a win under his belt. On the third, Maiden 4,000 for Phillies and Mares, going six furlongs. Field is six. Uh, I did go to the sixth corporate last. Oh, this is a race I had a lot of trouble with, Mike. Well, uh, not a lot of form. Not a lot of form so. on a lot of these. I went with corporate last. Mark Clutch is off to a good start. Uh, he's ran three. He's got a win in two seconds. His horses are firing. Uh, ran for Maiden 12.5 last year as a two-year-old. That was going three and a half. She's an include. Should like the more distance. Right. Uh, you know, I was looking for somebody in here. I went with her. I put uh, Adu out of the Anita Bolton barn. Peter Redekop, top connections there. Always have to respect them. And I put Joe et al. out of the Raw Maven barn. The most accomplished filly in the race. A couple seconds last year, but uh, an 11-time maiden. Now I couldn't put her on the top spot. I went 6-2-4. I went to the 11-time maiden. 
But I have the same four year olds. Four, yeah. six, and three. It's a yeah. four year old ring. It's three year olds. That's yeah. a big. Edge. I do like that. This know. time of year, it is such a huge edge. You will see the four year olds at Hastings anyway. Beat the three year olds a lot, most yeah. of the time. They're just. It's just the way it is. And uh, Joe at all uh, showed good speed. Ran into Holly's last call in the head end last time. And that knocked her off. Yeah. And once you get buried at the far turn, you're not going to hang on for second. You know. It, yeah, it, you kind of pack it in. It, yeah. And we watched Holly's last, last call win last weekend by about eight lengths. Four fun. Uh, for yeah, in, in a breeze for John Snow, who, as you mentioned, is off to a great start. But I want Joe at all to win it, hopefully in wire to wire fashion. Corporate last for second for me. Uh, good workouts uh, for a great barn, and uh, I put the three horse to do another excellent outfit. Uh, yeah. In for third, I went four, six, and three in the third. On to the fourth race, uh, we, we have some uh, nice, nice little fillies, uh, race fillies and mares here going uh, six panels. Uh, I, the sailing for the sun's got to stand out here. I mean, yeah. She's a stakes winner, still eligible for the non-two, non-three condition here. And, uh, you know, Robbie Anderson's taking full advantage of this for the um, Foundation Stables, who own and bred uh, the daughter of Sun Gold. Uh, looked great defeating Quattro Cat, who ended up being the champion last year, three-year-old filly, a BC bred three-year-old filly. But Sailing for the Sun's got to be awfully tough. She's trained brilliantly this spring, yeah. watched her work. I believe it was with off the top. Like uh, Robbie, you know, obviously you want to hook him up with with, with talented horses, and uh, he's got some talented older geldings. Yeah, and she's been working, working with, with an older boy. You know, yeah. and she's I, she's ready to go. I I went to her to win it. What are the five bonus spin for second uh, for Rosie Anderson, and uh, I put the two horse apples. Say, Park, who's who's uh, always dangerous. Nice little filly that ran in the Oaks last year and, and the Ballerina. I uh, put her in for third. I went three five two. I don't know much to add. Those are the three I got. I got them in the same order. Sailing for the Sun. Uh, not only is, is probably the most talented filly in here. She's also the best sprinter. I think. Yeah, it, uh, it's just everything points her. She's gonna get the lead. She's gonna. Yeah. She's in against four fillies. She should be. It's just it's a tailor made race. Yeah, for, absolutely. For she, her. she should be very tough in here. I got her on top. A bonus spin, which is kind of the wild card in here. A five year old uh, mare, uh, a hard spun that uh, Mike Wilden purchased privately uh, off uh, Jeff Mullins down in California. Uh, yeah, never underestimate these kind of horses because they can't come up here and beat our They can't come up here and be very horses. tough. Yeah, uh, three starts at the distance with two wins uh, under, or two seconds, sorry, under her belt. So we got her in the second spot. And Animal Side Park did have a couple good sprints uh, last year, but she is much better going long. I went three, five, and two, same as Mike. On to the fifth, uh, maiden $4,000 event, three-year-olds and up, eight horses on the card here. I went to the four Peyton's command, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Harold off to a good start and uh, you know, he is a 10 time maiden, but he's mm -hmm. kind of battle seasoned. He had four seconds last year. Uh, any one of those kind of efforts probably puts him in the winner's circle yeah. here, not an overly tough field. Uh, I put Jacques Pot uh, in the second spot of the Patty Lady Barn. All her horses are uh, training very well uh, coming into the meet. Hasn't run in over a year, hasn't run since 2014, but when he was running, uh, he was running against some pretty tough horses, so in for 4,000, he figures to, mm -hmm. you know, pick up the pieces. And the third spot, I went with my eye candy on the Rob Maven Barn. Already has a race this year, and it was a third, so maybe he can move up. I like the fact he, he, he does have a start, though, so I went him in the third spot. Four, one, and seven for me. I have the exact same three horses. Uh, Peyton's Command should be the horse to beat. This is not a tough maiden $4,000 yeah. race. This horse has run some races that are better than anyone else in here, unless someone jumps up uh, and, and improves immensely, then... Peyton's command is going to be awfully tough to yeah. beat. Jackpot is probably jackpot is probably the one that could jump up. Didn't run in 2015. Was in stakes company and or sales stakes company yeah. anyway, an allowance company as a as a two year old. But uh, you know this horse has trained well for Patty Laney. I give this horse a shot with David Lopez in the irons. I would play one and four in your late pick yeah. fours or whatever. I, I would take them both. And I put the seven horse, uh, it would be a distant third for me to my eye candy. I think the one and four, or four and one are your horses. I couldn't decide between I those think two. I think yeah. you probably yeah. only need to go too deep in any multi-leg wagers that you want to go on. But uh, I went four, one and seven in race number five. On to the sixth race. That's some 25, a good group here, $25,000 optional claimers. This is for $25,000 claiming horses. 
or non wears a two lifetime or non three BC bred, and it's come up with a good group. Yeah, I went to the six off the top. He's the best yeah. horse in this race, I think, by a yeah. mile. Not by a mile, but I mean, he he's awfully. He looks tough. like the toughest horse. He ran against older horses last year for twenty five grand. That's why he's eligible to run in this race. He is not in for the claiming price, by the way. Yeah, uh, he because he did early form. Yeah, yeah, he did run for twenty five last year, and you can come on back protected yeah. for the for the same level that you ran at. But he's a cool horse, and I think he's gonna get an ideal trip he likes sitting on the outside of a horse actually he likes the rail but i mean he likes sitting on the outside of a horse up near the lead there's only one other speed horse that looks like the two horse the odds are good and maybe laundered money but i think off the top's going to get a good trip i thought it was six or two i put the odds are good in for yeah. second he's back in sprinting i tried a mile and 16th going long last time he got beat by off the top but he's not a route horse anyway i think he's a much better sprinter the odds are good and he's been training well and, and as you mentioned earlier, Mel Snow is off to a great start this year. His yeah. horses are running great. So I went 6-2, and I put the four-horse commander. Got to always give this classy dude a shot. Yeah. He's protected for 25000 He's ran for the two bits last year. So I put him in for third. Not his best distance. He's a road horse. But at the 25000 level, you got to respect him. He is him. a 15 I left out man. Merlot. I left out Berard Breeze, or both brother Duster. All these horses are training really well. Yeah. And but, I mean, maybe it's not their best distance. Uh, and the pace scenario is what worried me about those horses more than anything else. Not their ability. It's just the pace scenario. It looks like the two and six are going to get an easy, yeah. comfortable tempo. Unless they try and, you know, kill, kill each, each other, other off. Yeah. But, I mean, it looks like it's going to be a comfortable tempo. And I went 6-2-4. I agree with off the top. Uh, he looks to be the best horse in the race, I think. Uh, Robbie's off to a good start as well. Uh, did win the stake two weeks ago. Uh, I put him low in the second spot. Nancy Betts' horses are running very good. We saw a shooting jacket show up in the first stake. He ran big. Uh, this is, of course, the Hastings Racing Club 2 horse. Yep, bought the uh, sale so for 30 grand. Yep, good luck to them. Uh, I've always liked Merlot. I picked him quite a few times throughout his career, and uh, I just think he fits in well here. I like his closing style. If it does mm -hmm. get hot up front, he's going to be one of the nice closers in here. And I put Commander in the third spot. Can never count this classy old boy. Earner of almost 600,000 yeah, lifetime. Yeah, he's a cool horse. I hate to pick him behind horses Anybody, that he would yeah. kill a couple of in years his prime. ago. But, yeah, exactly. Oh well. But uh, he's definitely eligible to win this. The clock, I went six, the five, clock four. gets all of us. Exactly. He's eight now, so not the commander he once was. On the seventh, uh, $16,000 claim event for Phillies and Mares. Uh, on the nightcap, I went to the sixth Fire Beauty. It was very dangerous. Anytime she ran for this level uh, last year, basically every time she ran last year, she was very dangerous. Uh, very tough speed filly. Uh, Ken Johnson claimed her uh, with Mike Anderson last fall. Turned her out for the winner. She's been training well for this. Uh, Hamill had a few options in here. He does go with Fire Beauty. I think she's your winner. I put uh, number one, Closing Intentions, in the second spot. Uh, very tough filly, winner of six mm -hmm. lifetime, but always right there. You know, look at her record last time. Was never ran six times, never did not hit the board. Two wins, three seconds in the third. I put her in the second spot in SL Express. It's been training smartly for Pat Jarvis in the third spot. I went six, one, and two. Yeah, I agree with the six fire beauty. It looks like she's going to make her way to the front end in here. I didn't see a lot of speed in this race at all. I think fire beauty's going to get the lead. Anytime she she's gets tough. the lead, yeah, she's, she's, tough. she's dangerous. I mean, look at, uh, she can go down there in 16 and change. She's got some game yeah. fire beauty. I know she was claimed last fall, but she's trained well for Mike, and uh, I just think she's really alive in here. But the one closing intentions, who's always a good solid uh, sprinting mare here, and uh, she's need a trip from the rail, but she might get it. I put the two SL Express in the mix as well. An honorable mention to race the wind for the Lytles. Yep. I think this horse uh, has a chance if she can overcome her outside draw. It is only six furlongs, so she will need to get out of there a little bit and, and get into some position because it's not six and a half where you can gallop up and get position. The turn comes up a little quicker going six at Hastings and uh, that's the only reason I didn't pick her top three. I can see her winning the race. She's good enough, but I just, I left her out of the top three, not because I don't love the mare, but it's just because uh, just tactically she may be at a bit of a disadvantage. Yeah. I went six, one, and two in the Saturday finale. Well, that'll do it for our selections, or analysis, pardon me, of the uh, Saturday, April 30th program. Next up on screen will be a quick recap of those picks. Uh, back in race number one, it was the five. Can't read now. <laughs> Catch and fire. Catch and fire. glasses on. Wow, that's small print. Uh, the three, a Riki princess in for second in the four moon ride. Race number two, I went to the four. Crackdown uh, for Patty Laney, four, one, and two. Race number three, I went to the four. Joe at all, four, six, and three. In race number four, I went to the three. Sailing for the sun, dropping at a stakes company. She's going to be awfully top. Three, five, and two for me in the fourth. That's it. That does kick off your late win four. Race number five, I went to the four. Peyton's command. 
over the one jackpot and the two feel no shame from Rob Maven. The sixth, were, sixth race went to the six off the top, six, two, and four. And the seventh and final, another six, went to Fire Beauty, six, one, and two in the finale. Up next are my picks. There we go. In the first, I went to the three, Ariki Princess, over the four and the five. In the second, I went to the four, Crackdown, over the one and the five. In the third, I went to the six, Corporate Glass, over the two and the four. In the fourth, number three, Sailing for the Sun, over the five and the two. In the fifth, I went to the four, Peyton's Command, over the one and the seven. In the sixth, Agree with Mike on the late double, number six, off the top, over the five and the four. And the nightcap, number six again, Fire Beauty, over the one and the two. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in to the April 30th edition of Handicapper's Corner. A quick reminder that the Kentucky Derby is one, one week, week Saturday. from this, as of taping, uh, uh, yes. yeah, as of uh, the race day, but yeah, yeah Nyquist. Mohamed. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great derby. And uh, I've got Mario yeah. in the mix as well. It's going to be a lot, uh, really enjoyable afternoon. So I do make reservations uh, here. Mario, who uh, I should mention, undefeated in Triple Crown races. He is a, per he's, he, a perfect he just two doesn't for two. He shows up for the big ones. He, yes, he does. does, Mario. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that is, of course, uh, Saturday, May the 7th, the Kentucky Derby. And uh, you can watch it here at the Derby Barn Grill if you can't. If you're not going to make it out to Hastings Race Car, it should be. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, anytime Mario or any local interest is involved yeah. in the Derby, it's uh, just that added a little hype to what's well, already a great, great race. Exactly. So, yeah. so it should be a lot of fun. Well, once again, thanks everyone for tuning in uh, uh, to Handicappers Corner. Uh, don't forget we do race again on Sunday, May the first. Uh, we do have eight races on tap. Look forward to seeing you then. On behalf of Drew, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time here at the Derby Bar and Grill. <laughs>